you know, helped me in joining Matthew, and I think we have on the Facebook, but Matthew, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Happy to be here. Very happy to be here. It's lovely. Everyone's been super nice. Thanks for such a warm welcome. I think they're nicer to you than they are to me, but... You know, the time will tell. I'm not right? salty about it, but I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have a lot of questions today, which is going to be fun to get through. And I think we're going to try the same format we did before, which was we'll take some of the questions. Me and Matthew will both dive in deep with you on them, talk about some different things in our experiences. And then at the end, just to try and get through a lot of questions, we'll do a hot take session where we can only say one sentence about each question. So to start us off, I wanted to actually ask Matthew two questions of my own, which- Hit me, let's go. Nobody else asked. And I think they're important questions. The first one is, Matthew, if you were getting into a career with Touch Designer now, what's hmm. your one tip to people for building that career, starting that career, or upgrading that career, what is, what's your number one tip? Number one tip. Oh, ah, oh man. I, you know, I think the, I think the number one tip I would give people is to remember that in this industry, especially it's all a magic trick. Like there is nothing that we do that is perfect or uh, real or any of these kinds of notions that we often hold on to. Uh, even in the client conversations that I have, like we are ultimately in the business of crafting an experience that is uh, an illusion. And so if you have to beg, steal, or borrow your way to get there, then that's what it takes to get there. Um, and I, I wish that I had thought about those ideas earlier on because I've, I've chased my tail in so many different circumstances looking for perfect simulations or the right or legit way to like approach a problem or the perfect solution for, a, you know, for any number of things. And really it's like, if it gets the job done, it gets the job done. If it's bubble gum and gaff tape, but it gets you past the finish line, then whew, it got you past the finish line. I think that's pretty good advice. And, and I have a funny addition, which I wonder if you've started doing is asking people why we're even doing things in real time. <laughs> This has been like the last three years of my career has every time someone says, let's do something I'm like, well, what if we just render most of it? And then we make some parts of it in real time. Did you have the same experience like it revelation wise? Yeah. I mean, I think I, I started with the notion that like, oh, well, we have to like, I wanted to do all of it in real time. Like it, it's going to be all perfect and all generative and all this all the time. And then the more that I fought with that, the more I started to kind of encounter, okay, well, you know, that's a beautiful dream, and I wish that we could do that. But, you know, the realities of, of the world are, like, modeling is hard, expensive, and laborious, and really good, clean models are not cheap or easy to make. Same thing with really good, clean assets. There's, there's so many different pieces of the puzzle that are a challenge to do exclusively in real time. So more and more, I start to think about what are the pieces there where real time provides the solution, illusion, experience that's the most satisfying? And let's put our energy into figuring out how to make those pieces really special. And the other stuff like, you know, let's use beautiful high rendered uh, or high quality uh, back plates, um, environment lights, uh, you know, light probes, all of those things to do, all of the beautiful lighting pieces that are really hard to do exclusively in real time. And like I said earlier, like it's a magic trick. And, and the more we get away from this notion that like there is a perfect way to simulate the world, I, I think the more fun we get to have because then we can really double down on the stuff that's fun, exciting and novel and not try to reinvent all the wheels all the time. I think that's pretty great advice and definitely something that I felt over the years. And the shift for me was really thinking about real time as a process and not an end goal, like not an end result. Because I think similar to what you're saying, when you start your career, like, well, the end result is everything being real time. And that kind of leads down the path you're saying, where it's like, oh man, you're looking for the perfect simulation and you're trying to make the lights look like they do at a C4D and <laughs> good luck. Whereas when I came to the idea where, well, you know what, real time is just another tool in this stack of like pre-rendered, real time, web, 
you know, apps, touch designer, Resolume, like all of these things just became tools. I found my career got way easier. The outputs got way better. I mean, by that time, it was like too late to stop the retreating hairline. But, like, you know, I wish if somebody else listened, then, you know, they would stop going bald a lot quicker. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. And that I, I think it's really just about figuring out where you got to double down and where you can shave off time, frustration and the whole like. Right. Because like we have this notion that the world is real time, but like you know, you're not watching a building get assembled in, you know, three frames or anything like that. It's not like you're constructing the world. It takes time to build structures, you know, like all of these things that the world is, are constructed out of are, are you know, a time-based medium and like are built on lots of other infrastructure. So mm -hmm. I think we can use some of those same ideas when we, you know, start to think of how we want to approach this kind of experience. I think that's pretty profound. So then my follow-up question would be carrying that down into the micro is what's your go-to can't live without touch designer trick? My go-to can't live without your touch ride or design. die technique. Oh man, that's, uh, that's a good one. That's, um, I'm trying to think of like, what do I use without fail? Uh, you know, as as like sassy and silly as it is, uh, I think it's really like the text port. The Ooh. text port is your best friend. Interesting. Can you, you elaborate? Give me a, give me an example with the text port. Uh, because I feel like the text port is, if you have nothing else in Touch Designer. You can find your way to operators. You can debug a problem. You can interrogate a value. You can change a parameter. Like, if you can get to that text port, you can probably make that thing do something, or figure out what's gone terribly mm -hmm. wrong, because Lord knows things go terribly wrong all the time. So I feel like the text port. Oh, and I hate to say this, but delay scripts, like those things, oh. I wish I could get away from them. <laughs> But sometimes waiting one frame makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. So I feel like between those two things, it's like master your text port and you know be ready to figure out that you know one frame wait you've got to you've got to add to some stupid script for a silly reason. And Dad had a good one. He said nulls. I think nulls are pretty amazing. Also, I think my my hilariously boring one would be. Uh, like the expansion, you know, in the square brackets, like channel expansion. Oh, yeah. Pattern matching. You could get some real tricky stuff done with pattern matching and channel and like the expan string expansion, I guess is the correct term. Um, and if you haven't checked out that stuff before, for your reference, you can go to, let me actually, if I open up the wiki here for you. There's some really good pages called channel matching. Channel match, pattern matching is what it's called. Pattern matching is a good page to check out if you're just trying to get started with this. Like maybe you've seen in other people's projects, they use these square brackets to do some magical voodoo. This is a great page. And then also I have to see also pattern expansion. This one is also very useful. I use both these all the time. <laughs> 